Welcome to another parent-teacher video lesson from the earlygiftedmanual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. Welcome to Lesson 49, Patterns and Sequencing. And in this lesson, I will show you some ways uh, in which you can work with your child to uh, recognize patterns, create patterns, and to sequence objects and even movements into patterns. And here are some of the materials you will need for this lesson. And uh, it could be any or all of the following, depending on what you have around. I hope you have most of these around, uh, starting with color tiles. And of course, those need no explanation. We've used those quite a bit. Uh, here's something new, the plastic chain links. And uh, we'll talk about those a little later. Let's see, what else? Um, Pattern blocks, you need a few pattern blocks or a set of pattern blocks to work with. And lacing beads, and I'll show you those uh, in just a little bit. Uh, these are called Unifix cubes, and they attach together, and you can make long what they call trains of Unifix cubes together. We'll be working with those. And what else? I uh, need a small bank of coins. And there you see our, my small bank of uh, various coins, quarters, nickels, dimes, pennies. And finally, craft sticks and toothpicks. And you can see the craft sticks look like this. They're the sm kind of the smaller version, what I like to call popsicle sticks. And a typical uh, toothpick. Okay, let me push these off to the side. And I think the first thing uh, we should talk about, like we always do, is we try to define what it actually is that we're doing here. So. We need to ask the question, what is a pattern? And a pattern is simply a very predictable and repeating sequence of objects, and, but it could also be movements, uh, events, and several other things. Uh, let me, uh, I think a, a better way to do it here would be to give you some examples, and you can repeat these examples to your, your child. There are, you know, there are time patterns, and we already talked about that, if you've looked at the, uh, the lesson on time and the calendar, so I won't go into those uh, too deeply. And as we all know, there are behavioral patterns. Let me think of one here. Oh, the classic saying, oh, that boy always gets into trouble. Well, <laughs> that's a, called a behavioral pattern. Um, and there's lots of other patterns too, but uh, in this lesson, we're going to concentrate on design patterns, and you'll see what I mean by that shortly. Uh, let's see. So let's start out by just, uh, uh, I'll be making a few object patterns here, and that's what you'll be doing, and you'll be working with your child to identify those patterns. The best way to start when learning about patterns and sequencing is to use color tiles. And uh, as you can see, I have a bank of color tiles here. Uh, four different colors, green, blue, red, and yellow. 
And uh, in all other ways, they're exactly the same. Only the color varies, so that, uh, that will be important, as you see here, when we get into our activities. And uh, two things I want to mention before we start those activities are uh, how, how you, the manner in which you work with your child. You always want to start out in these activities that you're doing the activity, uh, you show him or her how to do it, then the two of you progress to doing it together, and finally, of course, you want your child to be able to do the activity alone. And the other uh, point I want to make here is uh, you always want to be working from the simple examples to the more complex examples, and that's exactly what we'll be doing here. Okay, so uh, let's make some uh, color patterns. So let's start out with the, about the simplest pattern there is. And here we go. I'll put it out. And of course, as an adult, it's very easy for us to recognize uh, this pattern. It's just in every other pattern. We got red, yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow. And of course, if we extended it, and we'll get into that in a little while, uh, having the child extend patterns, it would simply keep going on and on and on like this. So that's one of the simplest patterns. Uh, you can do at the pattern blocks. And uh, let's see, here's another one. Let's try some different colors. And of course, this is another easy one for an adult to recognize, but for your child, it may be a little more difficult. It's green, green, blue, blue, green, green, blue, blue, and of course, it would go on and on. So, um, you know, this is all new to your child. So one thing you might have to do to help uh, him or her along a little bit is to make a little space between the things here. Uh, there we go. There's where I want the space. So show them green, green, blue, blue, and then look, it repeats itself. Green, green, blue, blue, and you might even want to add another section here. Uh, use this technique only for as long as you have to because really it's kind of a, you know, uh, um, it actually, uh, is, there's kind of a break, right, in the pattern. But what you're showing them is uh, you're trying to isolate the different aspects of the pattern here. So if you have to do that, do it, and then push them back together again and see if your child can still recognize the pattern. So green, green, blue, blue, green, green, blue, blue. It's a four block pattern and then it repeats itself. So you can discuss all these kinds of things uh, to your child while you're working with the pattern blocks. Here's one I love, and I think I'll use the same blocks here. That is that one of the hardest patterns to recognize for even adults. I mean, at first look it, look, it looks like it's just alternating between blue and green, but if you start from the beginning, you'll see otherwise. It's green, blue, blue, green, and then it repeats itself. Green, blue, blue, green. So you might have to help your child by doing this momentarily so they can see that. But this really throws, this is one of the hardest ones for children and even adults to get because it looks like it's just two blues, two greens, but you have to start at the beginning and you'll see something very different. So that's an interesting pattern. And of course then from there we could go to three colors, four colors. Let's just do maybe one three color one really quickly here. Blue, yellow, red. And hopefully your child can recognize this. If not, of course, you will have to uh, give her some help by our little cheating mechanism here. I hate to use the word cheating, but and kind of break them apart a little bit. 
and then push them back together. Of course, the pattern is blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red. So there's a, there's a uh, three color one. And I could go on and on with this, but I think I'll stop right there because you get the idea. And you could try several different kinds of patterns. You can't do enough of this until you, know, you, you can see that your, your child can easily uh, handle these simpler patterns. Now here, let me move these out of the way. Now here's a, a way where you're just isolating sh um, shapes. All the other attributes are the same and, and the shapes are going to be different. So let me get out these uh, plastic letters I have here. And yes, they're all the same because they're all blue. They're all about the same height. And they all have about the same, same thickness of line, so to speak. So they're all the same except their shapes are different. They're different letters. And let's make a pattern here. Let's see. And hopefully your child will say, oh, I know the pattern, it's WWXP, and then it repeats itself, WWXP, and on and on and on. And of course, if, if uh, they need a little help, give them all the help they need with this. So there's uh, an example of uh, different shapes, everything else the same. Now how about size? Let me move these out of the way, put them away here. Size. Here we go. I have these uh, interesting little spools that are part of my uh, my stock of playthings for kindergartners and preschoolers. And uh, as you can see, uh, everything's the same. They're all made out of wood. Um, they're all spools. Uh, what else? They're all the same color, so to speak. They have no color. But the size is different, so let's make a little pattern with these. And I would probably put these upright, but since I'm doing these lessons with a camera going straight down, I can't really put them like that. You can't see, so I'm kind of laying them on their side here. And there you go, we have a pattern. See if your child can pick out that pattern that they see there. And I know that the pattern is large, medium, small, medium. And then it repeats itself, large, medium, small, medium. So as you can see, uh, you can start out simple and, and go increasingly more complex. You can isolate certain uh, attributes to, to, to look at it that way. Um, but always remember to teach from uh, the simpler things and then move on to the more uh, difficult uh, examples. And let's look at some of these other manipulatives that uh, you and your child can use to, uh, to uh, learn how to, to uh, for your child to learn how to identify and uh, make these various object patterns. Uh, let's see, what's the first thing here? I can bring these chain links back out. And I've already put them together. I mean, you can do that on the spot if you want. And uh, what is the pattern? Have your, have your child look at it and it's blue, blue, yellow, yellow, green, green, and then it repeats itself. Blue, blue, yellow, yellow, green, green. And of course, we can do something now called extending the pattern. Um, you can kind of uh, say, okay, now can you extend that pattern? Can you keep the pattern going? And they might need a little help the first time around, but. Hopefully you'll get this. Let me put some of these out here. Okay, sorry for the delay. So they would have to extend the pattern, so they have to go all the way back here and look. Okay, it starts with a blue. Then there's another blue. And then after that, we have a yellow. 
and then we have another yellow and then after that yellow we have a green and another green and then of course that's the end of the pattern and we start all over again so that's the way uh, you could teach your child to extend the pattern start at the beginning look what's there and then replicate it on the other end of your whatever it is your chain links your string of objects or whatever uh, unifix cubes those, they're great for uh, sequencing and patterning and I already have three of them together here so I'm going to keep going on this and you could probably guess the pattern before I'm finished here all right so uh, what's our pattern um, blue black purple then it repeats blue black purple blue bat black purple and finally you could say okay can you extend that pattern and they'll look back here where we started with the blue what comes next a black what comes next a purple and sometimes kids they get so into doing this and especially with these uh, these uh, unifix cubes they'll make long 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 chains of these and it'll be absolutely giddy about it and, and total delight of how they can repeat this pattern over and over and over again so uh, uh, you don't be surprised when that happens it's quite likely it will uh, pattern blocks of course you can sequence pattern blocks even though you can't really isolate like color and shape and stuff here's a very simple one very simple sequence and your child should be able to say oh yeah yellow hexagon blue diamond orange square yellow hexagon blue diamond orange square and then needless to say you can say okay extend that pattern and they'll look here and see the yellow hexagon next is the blue diamond and next is the orange square um, maybe one more thing here um, some coins Let's, I've got a bank of different coins here so I'm going to do this 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 is going to be a little tougher one definitely be a little tougher one maybe even for you It'd probably be for me if I didn't know it ahead of time but this will definitely be a tough one for your child all right I hope I got it right here what's the pattern so uh, but backtracking a little bit coins are great for for uh, laying out patterns we've got uh, quarter penny nickel penny dime quarter penny nickel penny dime so that's the pattern it's a pattern of five coins in, uh, in a certain sequence and then it repeats itself and of course um, you could have them extend this for as far as, as, as they can I, I won't do that because you've seen me do it now a few times so and of course what you want to do when they are extending these patterns is make sure your child is using very precise language for example this one you know uh, she, uh, she's pointing and saying quarter penny nickel uh, penny dime and then she's saying then the pattern repeats itself quarter penny nickel penny dime so make sure the language is very precise and, and not sloppy when you're doing this